glory, glory, and glory. As we were worshiping, I saw rain begin to come. Oh, yeah. Okay. And uh, the rain turned into these big fluff snowflakes. And the Lord reminded me, see, after my visitation from the Lord, which was only, uh, uh, then I saw, I was in New Mexico with Kate about a week or two afterwards, four days. So I wasn't here on the earth. And it was a time when God was allowing my thoughts to be manifested, where he says he does far above all we could ever ask or think. And things that I had just said, desire, I don't, one morning, or one night we were, I mean, it was, we were in New Mexico, it's 85 degrees outside, it's cooking like crazy, no humidity. I mean, you get out there and you can fry quick. I'm laying in the sun and so forth during the day, and I, and I, and I came in and whatever, and I said to Kate, I don't know why I want to see snow. She like looked at me like, you're out of your mind, dude. We woke up the next morning, there was about a foot of snow. I mean, snowflakes that were coming down, we took pictures. And it just began to blow. And, and the, yeah, there were snow puffs. And, and, I, and, a, and, and, and this was just part of some of the things. It's things I was just desiring. I was thinking about some all of a sudden coming in my heart. And I would say, man, I'd like to do, I'd like to. And it was manifesting. And, and the Lord reminded me, he says, I'm bringing us back to that. He said, I'm bringing us back into the anointing where even your thoughts will be manifesting. One of the things that's happening right now in the area, remember, Satan's greatest weapon is deception, amen, and his power is fear. And the enemy has succeeded in the area where fear is gripping people, you know, preventing people from fellowshipping. I mean, they're ordering food out and passing the money underneath the front door. I mean, I, I, I'm seeing people riding their bicycle with masks on. They're on the front porch with the mask on. I'm like, what the heck? Fear is gripping people where they're now doing work at home. Amen? And they're even afraid to go back to work. That's called paranoia, schizophrenia, fear. This fear is escalating in such a tremendous way. People are now, listen, isolation. It's good for us to gather, but what do you do afterwards? We should be association and fellowship. Isolation is dangerous to a believer because the enemy will mess with your mind. The next thing you know, you're taking counsel from your goldfish. You're taking counsel from Facebook, Fleshbook. You're getting internet toxic. So people are, uh, uh, they're doing, the powers of darkness are doing everything they can to prevent people from connecting. Isolation is a key and disastrous. Because it creates an individual to associate with things that could be negative and demonic and not even know it. Now the people are assuming and delusional. Now they've got them in such a fear and panic and I'm telling you, people are getting schizo out there. The, wearing, the gloves are getting bigger and the masks are getting bigger. Soon you'll see people in wetsuits. They probably do have a full suit, I'm sure of it. Where they're walking around with their own tanks and you know, Darth Vader stuff, you know. But remember, fear, why does the enemy want to put us in that state so that we don't advance? Amen? So what we're talking about is advancing 
God wants to advance our position. So we want to talk about advancing your position. Everybody has a position. Amen? We are spiritually positioned. But the enemy doesn't want you to advance. He knows if you can advance, you'll hurt him. In Hosea chapter 6, I think. It was 3. I don't know. I'll tell you when I get there. <laughs> I'm just brought to the scripture, so I, 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 was, I was just remembering it. Glory. Oh, happy days. Hosea. Six. Hosea six. Praise you, Lord. Is everybody there? Hosea chapter six, it's on a certain page of your Bible. <laughs> Might be on a different page than mine, but it it's on your page. Hallelujah. Let's speak it together, verse 1. Come and let us return to the Lord, for he has torn, but he will heal us. He has stricken, but he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. And on the third day, he will raise us up, that we may live in his sight let us now know, let us what? Pursue the knowledge of the Lord. His going forth is established as the morning. He will come to us like the what? The rain. Maybe snowflakes. I don't know, but. Like the latter and the former rain to the earth. So he is coming. In other words, the rain is associated not only with the anointing and the presence, but provision, strategy. It causes me and you with the anointing to grow. Again, it's one of the areas where we are right now watching so many people fall into this deceptive fear that is preventing them from advancing. It's causing division and separation. It's causing families to be destroyed. It's causing businesses to collapse. It's causing churches to and fellowships to fold. It's crazy. Third John. Where you are advancing your position. You know, we have a call, a purpose, and a what? Destiny. Amen. And God wants to advance your call. He wants to advance your purpose. And he wants to advance your destiny. But fear will prevent that. You will not advance if you're bound by fear. It doesn't work. Oh, happy days. Glory. Verse 2. 3 John, verse 2. Everybody there? Let's speak it together. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper. Look at that word prosper means advance. Does everybody get it? So what's he saying? I pray that you're going to advance in all things. How many of y'all want to advance in everything? I mean, you have to be an idiot if you don't. You know what I'm saying? We all want to prosper. We all want to advance, but we want to be about it kingdom business. You know, even if you're in business, you want to advance the kingdom in your business. Amen? Beloved, I pray that you may prosper, you may advance in all things, and be in what? Health, just as your soul prospers or what? Advances. As your soul what? Advances. You may advance in all things pertaining to kingdom business. Just as your soul advances, what's it going to advance into? The image of Christ. Not the image of humanity. Not the image of the old man. 
but into the image of Christ. Without that, without that advance, you cannot advance. The only thing you'll do is recycle. Amen? What, and what it prevents it is not only knowing, not knowing the truth, but knowing the truth and not practicing the truth. Amen? Living the truth. So we know that, again, your soul is your, your mind, your will, your emotions, your imagination, your conscience, subconscious. Amen? These things must be advanced into the image of Christ. He says, for I rejoice greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you. Well, the truth that was in them was being expressed, wasn't it? Just as you walk in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. As a spiritual father, I have no greater joy than to watch my children walk in truth and watch their soul prosper, advance. In Romans 12. Romans 12. Hallelujah. In verse 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world. 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 What's he talking about? Don't allow the worldly image to overtake the image of Christ. But be transformed by the renewing of your thoughts, hello, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. To advance our position. What is your position? One of the positions is position of trust. It's a position of trust. It's not about man's trust. It's about God's trust in me and you. You must master your thoughts to get there. I'm going to say that again. You must master your thoughts and not your thoughts master you. Does everybody get this? I mean, this is vitally important. Why? Because God wants to advance us. You will not advance if your thoughts are still mastering you, if your emotions are still mastering you. Your, your thoughts are a direct connection and expression of emotions, perception, and how you perceive things, and your understanding. Does everybody get it? Advancing your position to reach the perfect will, amen, <laughs> by making more perfect decisions of agreement. You will not fulfill the perfect will of God unless you're starting to make more perfect decisions. Amen? That's how they run hand in hand. Is everybody okay? Joshua 6. Oh, happy days. Joshua. I think it's Joshua. <laughs> Joshua. Glory. Is everybody all right? Everybody good? Are you blessed? Are you highly favored? Are you anointed and appointed? Are you ready to roar? I, <laughs> I lost Joshua. It left me. Where are you, Josh? Praise God. <laughs> Joshua. I know you're in here somewhere. Josiah. <laughs> 
De Deuteronomy. There you are. Joshua 6, verse 1. Let's read it together. Everybody okay? Cool? Everybody ready? Advancing your what? Position. Now, Je now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hands, its king and its mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all you men of war. You shall go all around the city once. This shall do six days. And seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns <clears throat> before the ark. How many of you know the ark was anointed? <laughs> if you don't know that, you know that now. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. It shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall shout with a great shout. Then the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people shall go up, every man straight before him. Now I want to talk to you spiritually in this arena because this is talking about personal walls. Personal walls of unseen bondage, those that are not armed with truth. Watch what happens here. Hallelujah. Um, verse 6. Then Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant. Remember, the Ark of the Covenant carries the presence of God in the anointing. And let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Ark of the Lord. And he said to the people, proceed and march around the city and let him who is what? Armed. Armed with what? Armed with truth. What was the next thing? What's the next word? Advance. Let him who is armed advance before the ark of the Lord. In other words, they were backed by the anointing. So it was when Joshua had spoken to the people that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Lord advanced and they blew the trumpets and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. The armed men went before the priests who blew the trumpets and the rear guard came after the ark while the priests continued blowing the trumpets. Now Joshua had commanded the people saying, you shall not shout or make any noise with your mouth, your voice. Why? Because he said, in other words, what comes out of your mouth will nullify things. Nor shall a word proceed out of your mouth until the day I say to you, shout, then you shall shout. Again, these are talking about, I'm talking about personal walls of unseen bondage, those that are armed with the truth. Why? By mastering emotions, and mastering perception, and a mastering understanding. Advance with his presence. Many say they don't understand. Do you ever get around someone? That, hey, listen, every time somebody goes through something, if you're going through something, one thing you don't want to start doing is, I don't understand. You don't have to understand. See, there's a word called go through. If you're going through something, you know you're going to go through. You don't have to understand it all. If God wants you to get it, he'll release it to you. Don't go to your goldfish, amen, and get counsel for this understanding. And whatever you do, don't go back to the world to try and understand what's happening. And don't go to Facebook, Internet. Don't go wait on God. Amen? Many say they don't understand every time something happens because they have not advanced their positions to break down the walls of self. Self is still preventing. Self is still preventing. Self is still preventing. These are walls of self. Everybody okay? Hebrews 4. Hebrew, not next to Joshua. <laughs> Hebrews 4, verse 1. 
Hebrews 4 and verse 11. Did you ever get a blank moment? Where am I? <laughs> it's like when you go in the other room, you're looking for something. The heck I'm in here for? I hate those moments, you know? And then you leave, and you go two floors away, and then you remember what you left there, and you have to go back and go there, and you go back there, and it happens all over again. Wait a minute. Man, I, sometimes I get so angry, I just say, forget it. I'm not even going to get it. Lord, you need to restore my memory. I'll kill somebody. Verse 11. <laughs> Is everybody there? <laughs> Don't get a blank moment on me, all right? <laughs> Let's speak it. Hebrews 4.11. Let us, therefore, be diligent to enter that rest. Rest. Lest anyone fall according to the same example of what? Disobedience. For the word of God is what? Living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the division of soul and spirit, and of joints and marrow and is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart and there is no creature hidden from his sight but all things that are naked and are open to the eyes of him whom we must all give account again we're entering a position of trust and understanding allowing the words of Christ the words of Christ to separate the spirit soul and body that's what it does. It separates it. You know, prior to being born again, you weren't separated. Your flesh and soul were just one thing. Does everybody get it? Until you became born again through the Word of God, it began to separate. It began to separate your spirit from your soul and from your flesh. And you began to discern that. So as we enter the position of trust and understanding, it's allowing the words of Christ to separate our spirit, soul, and body with understanding to discern voices of influence. Because we didn't discern voices of influence. We just felt what we thought, what we said, whatever we felt, and whatever else. So in this separation through the word of God, it, it helps us to discern the voices of influence and desires and the intents of the heart. Again, without advancing, when there's not advancement and there's not mastering over these things, we don't advance. Amen? We don't grow. The only thing we do is recycle. We recycle. We repeat. Psalm 16. not what God is trying. That's not what God wants. So we're going through this process and this refining and burning and so forth and these trials. Why? He's trying to get us to advance. Amen? Let me share something with you. One of the things, there's so many people still living in an outdoor court and they don't realize they still are. Let me tell you something. You can go to a worship service and worship like crazy. You can go to a Bible study and get the Word and leave it there. You can enter the Holy of Holies and go right back into the outer court as soon as you go out that door. And live there. Until you go to the next service. Does everybody understand? That's what prevents people from advancing. Psalm 16, verse 7. So God is trying to advance people from the outer court into the holy place and most holy place. Verse 7, is everybody there? It says, I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. <clears throat> you know, he gives counsel, but many people don't obey it. 
uh, many, let me tell you, you know when people, they go get counsel? They get counsel from Facebook, Fleshbook, everywhere else. They get counsel from people. They don't even get counsel from the Spirit. And when they do, they don't get it because they don't have understanding. Without that, you can't advance. You recycle. Is everybody all right? It says here, I will bless the Lord who's given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me because he's at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Then why is a person moved? Because they're not before him. The Lord's not before them. They may have all the good words, but the Lord's not before them. Again, you can attend a service every, every day and walk out of that service and not take him with you. I mean, this is an area that must be understood. It must be what? Understood. Again, he, he gives counsel, but they don't obey. Hard instruction, but they don't hold on. They attempt to set the Lord before them with no success. And they are easily moved because of lack of advancement of the soul into the image of Christ. Isn't that God's greatest desire, that we become like him? So without that lack of advancement in his image and likeness, we recycle. And he can't trust. He can't trust. I don't care if you can do everything perfect. He can't still trust you because your soul's not advanced. Verse 9. Okay, so here's an advancement. Therefore, my heart is what? Glad. Hallelujah. And my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope. For you will not leave my soul in torment. Nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You will show me the path of life, and I'm going to walk in it, man. In your presence is fullness of joy, and at your right hand are what? Pleasures forevermore. With advancement by mastering emotions, thoughts, of, and perception with understanding. Mastering these things. You know, I know we fool around and joke around with the world. Who told you that? But you got to start taking this more serious. Who did tell you that? Oh, I know. No, you don't. Because if you knew, you wouldn't be moved. If he was in front of you, you wouldn't be moved. Amen? Luke 8. Hallelujah. You know, the devil ain't stupid. But he gets the people of God to become stupid. Luke 8, 4. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Let's speak it with a... And when a great multitude had gathered and they had come to Jesus from every city, he spoke by a parable. He says, A sower went out to sow a seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trampled down, and the birds of the air devoured it. Some fell on a rock, and as soon as it was sprang up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. But others fell on good ground, sprang up, and yielded a crop of a hundredfold. When he had said these things, he cried, who, He who has ears to hear, let them what? Hear. Then his disciples asked him, saying, What does this parable mean? See, they didn't have the understanding. So they couldn't advance, could they? And he said, to you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to the rest it is given in parables. That seeing they may what? See. And hearing they may not understand. That's what's happening now. To many people call themselves believers. They're seeing, but they're not perceiving. 
Amen. They're hearing, but they're not understanding. Verse 11. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear. Then the devil comes and takes away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be what? Saved. That's outer court. But the, but the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root, who believe for a while, and in time of temptation or trial or trauma, they what? Fall away. Now, the ones that fell among thorns are those who, when they have heard, they go out and are choked with cares, riches, pleasures of life and bring no fruit to maturity. But the ones that fell on the good ground are those who, having heard the word with a noble, meaning humble, and good heart, keep it and bear fruit with what? Patience, which means what? Endurance. These are examples of not allowing the truth of Christ's words <laughs> and presence to grab hold of them. Why? Because the word says when we hear the word, if it's not mixed with what? faith it does no good see again you can listen to a thousand teachings a day and still not advance because you're just if you're not taking it and absorbing it and using it then you're just giving it away or you're allowing the enemy to take it again he talks about what are they doing he's because they're not mixing it with faith and they're leaving the word and God's presence behind. And they're putting themselves in front. In Mark 8. And the process and how the enemy is operating right now. That's why you're seeing all kinds of stuff going on. There's all kinds of things going on everywhere. I mean, no matter where you turn, there's something here, there's something there. There's, there's an explosion here, there's an arrest here, there's that there. People getting beat up on the streets. People getting run over, people getting killed. All kinds of things that are happening from all over the place. They just pulled a kid out of a, a car and beat him so bad and kicked his head in and bounced off the ground. Now they're looking for him. It's amazing to me that somebody's standing there stinking filming it. That's a guy that needs to go to a jail. Because he didn't do nothing about it. Oh, happy days. <laughs> Mark 8, 31. Hallelujah. Mark 8, 31. Is everybody there? And Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed. And after three days rise again. He spoke this word openly. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. I think he didn't get it. He said, listen, after three days I'm going to rise again, homie. You know? No understanding. But when he had turned around and he looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter, saying, Get behind me, Satan, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but yourself, but the things of men, humanity, human nature, fears. He was afraid for Jesus. Does everybody get it? <laughs> when he just called him, when Jesus said, who do they say today? He said, man, you're the son of God. You're the anointed one. And then he rebukes him. Oh, man, I'm afraid for you, Jesus. Nobody's getting to you except for through me. He said, get behind me, homie. You're not mindful of the things of God. You're allowing the enemy to steal everything you've been with me, hearing my words. You're allowing the enemy to steal. You keep putting yourself first and not me. Did everybody get it? 
And when he had called the people to himself with his disciples also, he said to them, whoever desires to come after me, whoever desires to come after me, whoever desires to come after me. Now, everybody's here because you have a desire to go after the Lord. Let him deny himself. That's the first thing. But it's amazing in how many people put themselves first. Well, you don't know what I'm going through. Well, you don't know how I feel. And I don't care. Get out. Get behind yourself. <laughs> Let them, whoever wants to come after me, must deny himself. That means you've got to put yourself behind and put Christ in front. Or it's not about you no more. It's not about you, me, or anything anymore. It's not about my abilities, my talents, my works, my failures, my successes. Nothing. It's not about any of those things. It's about him. That's it. Until we reach that position, we cannot advance. Ooh. And then he says, and take up your cross, take up your sword, amen, and fight. And then follow me. <laughs> it's amazing. And he says, whoever desires to save his life is going to what? Lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel will save it. For what would a profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what would a, a man give in exchange for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him, the Son of Man, also will be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Again, this is powerful. He says, you're not mindful of the words of God, but thoughts of self. It's all about me. He said, deny self. That means deny flesh. Pick up the sword. Fight for the conversion of soul. So it becomes the image and likeness of Christ. And then allow the Spirit of Christ to live and lead. Allow the Spirit of Christ to live and lead. Amen? Why? That's an advancement from the outer court, holy place, the most holy place. These are places of position where God wants to advance us all the time. He doesn't want you and me to live in the outer court. He'll accept that we live in the holy place, but he wants us living in the most holy place where we are led and live in the spirit. Self can't live there. That's why he said you've got to deny yourself if we want to get in there. Self has no place in that place. None. And it's the only place that you can advance from. Does everybody get that? Because why? Then you're led by the Spirit, not by your emotions, not by flesh, not by this, not by that. Oh, hallelujah. Go to Philippians 1. Advancing your position. Glory. Oh, happy days. Very simple, short teaching. Philippians chapter 1. And verse 19. Is everybody there? For I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. According to my earnest expectation and hope in, that, in nothing, that, and hope that in nothing I shall be what? Ashamed. But with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is what? Gain or what? Advancement. I mean, what a confession. To me, to live is Christ. And to die is advancement. Why? Because without dying, you ain't advancing. Because then you're still in the way. 
But if I live on in the flesh, this will mean fruit for my labor, yet which, what I shall choose I cannot tell. For I am hard-pressed between the two, having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to remain in the flesh is more needful for you. <laughs> and being confident in this, I know that I shall remain and continue with you all for your progress or your advancement and joy of faith. That your rejoicing for me may be more abundant than Jesus Christ by my coming to you again. Only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel, and not in any way terrified by your adversaries, which is to them a proof of perdition, but to you of salvation, and that from God. This is so powerful. For to you it has been granted on behalf of Christ not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake, having the same conflict which you saw me and now here is in me. To live is Christ and to die is gain. Philippians 2. Let's speak it. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being what? Like-minded. Having the same love, being of one accord and one mind. Let nothing be done through what? selfish ambition or conceit, but in loneliness of mind, let each one esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interests of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking a form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, and those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, the Father. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation. With what? Fear, reverence, honor, and respect, and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Do all things without what? Complaining, grumbling, disputing, blaming, justifying. That you may become blameless and harmless children of God. Without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as the lights in the world. Now listen. He says that you may become blameless and harmless. That's the bride. That's the bride. Amen? Amen. A lot of people think they're the bride, but they ain't. Not without advancement. Without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in a day of Christ and that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Like-minded, one accord, one mind. Denying self and advancing your position. Advancing is going to take cooperation with the Spirit of Christ. We're advancing into the image and likeness, allowing the divine resurrection power to rule over our hearts. To rule over our hearts. Without that, you cannot de dethrone the enemy. 
His purpose again, he wants, it's going to take a lot of cooperation with the Spirit of Christ so that we can advance in the image and likeness, allowing the divine resurrection power to rule over our hearts and dethrone all wrong ways of thoughts and perceptions, emotions, and wrong understandings. Letting go of the past fears and entanglements of life, doubt and unbelief, and reasoning of justification so that the anointing of Christ will take hold of you and uphold you in all things so that an atmosphere of joy, faith, love, righteousness, and power surrounds you all the days of your life. Advancing your position. You know, Paul said <laughs> that I may be found in the position of Christ. Not only to live, but to gain. That it may be him that lives and not me. Man, we are in such a time right now where we really need to come out of ourselves, out of our past, and into the future. Why? Because that's where God wants to advance me and use into the future. Stopping all this foolishness. The playing the game of emotion. Playing the game of fear. Again, people are locking themselves in the houses. It's crazy out there. This is all the enemy. Remember, isolation is a terrible thing. Amen? Association is important, but make sure what you're associating with. <laughs> Praise God. Why? So we can advance. Remember, we are advancing in the image and likeness of Christ. That's what it's all about. That's how we express Him. He's looking for His children to be manifested. Amen? The world is looking for the children of God. The world talks about the corruption and everything that God has created it's supposed to be handed over to us. Remember, we're the restrainers. We need to start acting like offsprings of the anointed one. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. And let what's been imparted here today bring counsel, correction, direction, conviction, and advancement. For your name, for your glory, and for your honor. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Hallelujah. Give somebody a hug and tell them you did.